Here's a beginner's guide to Planet Crafter. Hi friends, and welcome to Planet Crafter. This terraformation-based survival game is the newest indie survival game to hit the market. As someone who's religiously followed the game for a couple months now, I've had some time to hone my planet crafting skills and develop a system that works well for starting up a new world so we can get you and your multiplayer buddies off on the right foot. Don't worry, this guide is spoiler-free story-wise, but if you would prefer a quick overview of what the game is and its current stories, feel free to check out this video I made earlier this year. But without further ado, here's my beginner's guide to Planet Crafter. You start in an airship pod, crashed into a barren planet that will eventually become a lush oasis that you'll be proud to call your home. But for now, you need to focus on staying alive. It helps to think of this airship as being very similar to your first life pod in Subnautica. It has basic early survival supplies, a short message from your homeland, and the basic crafter that will let you create your first items. Inside the pod, your oxygen levels won't decrease and you can store things in that blue chest nearby. Right next to the oxygen bar is where you'll notice two other survival bars, specifically your health and your thirst level. Thirst can be replenished by melting the ice found around the life pod in your crafter. Your hunger and health are the same thing in Planet Crafter, so don't go hungry or you will perish. Right now, your best bet for food is venturing beyond this little life pod, and that's where things get interesting. Like I said, this is a mostly barren orange dust ball, but you'll notice a few materials poking up from the rocks around you. If it looks like a black glob, it's silicon. If it looks like some blue cubes, it's cobalt. If it looks like a bumpy orb, it's titanium. If it looks like someone failed miserably at drawing a map of Wisconsin, it's magnesium. And if it's slightly shiny in some parts but an otherwise normal rock, it's iron. To collect these materials, simply point at them with your tech pistol and pretend you're Scotty preparing to beam up Captain Kirk. You haven't quite learned how to use your hands yet, so the tech pistol's the next best thing. You're gonna need a lot of this stuff, so it's okay to hoard it a little bit. Just don't get too carried away because your backpack is only so big, but we can fix that. If you want to do more than live a very boring life not venturing further than 50 meters from your life pod though, you're going to need some equipment, which can be crafted in that tube looking thing right next to the life pod entrance. The first bits of equipment that you're going to need are the oxygen tank, which predictably expands your oxygen capacity, and a backpack, so you can hoard more fun things. These are just the first tiers of these particular kinds of equipment. You can upgrade them and get more stuff down the line. Eventually, you can hoard as many items as you like and even automate your storage system so your chests don't look like mine. But we're focused on the early game for now, so a ton of blue foot lockers it is. To accommodate all of those foot lockers, the next upgrades you'll want are the construction and deconstruction ships, which will let you access the base building portion of Planet Crafter. Starting a home base is essential to early survival, and word to the wise, don't build it right next to your life pod to avoid a major headache down the road. There are a few main components to building a successful base. A, be sure that you can spread out in multiple directions. The terrain is finicky and the build snapping can be a bit wonky with what it will and won't let you do. And B, give yourself some height. Certain regions of the map make for better base building than others, but having a nice view is always worth it and it may save you some struggle down the line. Other than those, building a base in the early game can be as simple as laying down a box and adding a door. This will keep you safe and replenish your oxygen. Inside the box, I recommend placing some storages, your crafting stations, and the terraformation and blueprint screens that the game instructs you to make. We'll come back to what these mean later, but they do have to be placed inside your base. It's also important to note that these boxes can be placed down anywhere on the map, and the last one you enter will be your respawn point should something unfortunate happen. By something unfortunate, I am of course referring to getting your head caved in by a meteor, which can and probably will happen to you at some point. Meteor showers are a way for the game to continuously replenish resources around you without them miraculously spawning out of the orange dust. So be certain to check the landing sites for extra material and potentially some more advanced stuff beyond what you're used to finding. Eventually, you'll get to a point where meteor showers can bring down more than just the basic materials that are everywhere around you in the early game, and they become an important event to pay attention to. Just remember that the color of the meteor's tail indicates what kinds of resources it's dropping. While you're busy running around collecting debris that fell from the sky, you may stumble across a few blue foot lockers that are strikingly similar to the ones in your life pod. You should open these. They'll contain helpful resources like water bottles, extra materials, and some food to keep you going. The loot inside these chests scales with your current game stage, so it won't be anything too exciting in the early game, but they're still a great way of keeping yourself alive for the first couple days. And after you've looted one, you can always deconstruct it to avoid repeatedly checking the same locker that you've checked 14 times before. And as a bonus hint, there are even some special not blue foot lockers hidden around the map that have even more bonus special stuff inside. And if you take the time to look up from the ground every once in a while, you'll notice that there are several different areas around you. Every biome and planet crafter is unique, and you'll find special resources beyond the basic five things as you explore them. Right next to the standard spawn are two essential resources, iridium and aluminum. They'll help you create your first terraformation machines to get the orange dust ball rolling. Now we can jump back to those two screens we installed in our base earlier. The big screen with the nice pictures on it indicates your terraformation stage, i.e. how far along in the game you are and how far you are to the next stage. This gives you some hints as to what to expect as you move forward, but if you want big number to go up fast, you're going to need a lot of machines to help you. Your terraformation index is classified by a few categories. 
In the very earliest parts of the game, you're mostly worried about pressure, heat, and oxygen. For any machine, you can build it in the same way you built your little house earlier by opening the menu and selecting the right thing, assuming you have the materials in your inventory. For pressure, you can build drills. Drills need to be built outside your base to function. These are cheap, so build a lot of them. For oxygen, you can build veg tubes inside your base and you can put seeds inside the tube. If you remember that little green friend from your life pod, this is a great place to put it. As you go venturing further and discover more kinds of plants, check to see what their oxygen multiplier is. They start down at 100% with the seed lerma and go up to 600%, essentially a 6 times multiplier with the golden seeds. To maximize your oxygen production, just make sure that you're using the seeds with the highest multiplier available. And for heat, you'll need, shockingly, heaters. These also go inside, and it's not a bad idea to have a specific room dedicated to heaters entirely. Heat ticks up quite slowly, and it's important to get it going quickly. All of these machines require power, so you're going to want to invest in some solar panels, because we're at least pretending to be eco-friendly while literally changing an entire planet's atmosphere. Like everything else in the game, power generation comes in multiple tiers, so you're going to want to start off with the basic solar panels, but as soon as you unlock them, I highly recommend making a decently sized solar field of the second tier panels. Those will have to hold down your power situation until you start unlocking some of the more powerful options. So again, a ton of them is preferable. Planet Crafter has lossless crafting, so after you decide that a certain machine is no longer worth its power consumption or material cost, you can destroy it to get all of the materials back that you put in without losing a single thing. It's also important to note that all of the machines work for the entire planet, so you could place down your solar field on one end of the map and your base all the way on the other side and it would still be powered. There is no proximity limit in the game, so feel free to put stuff wherever you want it. And now that you know what goes into making that big number go up, it's time to revisit that second small screen we installed in the base earlier, the blueprint screen. This screen conveniently tells you what you'll be unlocking as a certain terraformation metric reaches a certain number, so you can more accurately track your progress overall and plan for the future as it approaches. It's also the place to unlock blueprints hidden in the microchips you'll find scattered around the map. Certain things, like upgraded drills or heaters, you'll probably want to install right away. Additionally, you can also grow your own food, so you aren't reliant on dehydrated astronaut ice cream forever. You can always check how effective a given building is by hovering over it in the build menu, so you can see how much pressure per second it produces and how much energy it consumes. For the most part, it is well worth changing out all of the previous tier buildings for the next one as soon as it's unlocked, as generally a second tier building is worth at least twice of its earlier counterpart. And as you begin upgrading, you'll probably start to need more of those advanced materials that you'll need to explore the map for. The only somewhat advanced material that you're likely to have trouble finding naturally in the early game is Super Alloy, but have no fear because you can craft it yourself by smacking together tons of those five basic materials we talked about in the beginning, along with some aluminum in an upgraded crafter. Super Alloy is expensive in the early game, but it's an essential crafting resource that you're going to want loads of. Fortunately, you can ease the manual labor for a little bit by installing ore extractors, which will extract certain ores given the tier of extractor and the region in which it's placed. You will need osmium for these, so check some new areas to find any unusual materials that you're unfamiliar with. Ore extractors also minorly help with pressure and heat, so they're valuable in more ways than one. As far as the relatively early game optimization, my number one tip for new players is to launch rockets as soon as you have the option to. Rockets can be deployed off of a launch platform unlocked at 350 KTI, and each rocket will multiply the output of its relevant metric by 10 times for the entire planet forever. You'll start off with access to the pressure and heat rockets, and I highly advise launching multiple of each of these. Bonus tip, if you're fast, you can launch several rockets at the same time and the physics is pretty funny. Not only do the pressure and heat rockets multiply pressure and heat output, but they also summon meteor showers of specific useful resources. Pressure rockets summon iridium, which can be used to make more heaters and things, and heat rockets summon uranium, which can be used to make rockets and also can be used in more powerful energy generation. Each rocket launched adds a 10 times multiplier to the base rate of a machine, so they don't multiply off of each other, but it's still a massive boost and the largest multiplier in the game. As you progress through different terraformation stages, you'll also unlock more rocket types, and the same advice applies. Launch rockets and launch a lot of them. If you build it, things will come. Very early on in the game, you'll start to make the swap from focusing just on pressure and heat to focus a lot more on oxygen and biomass. The biodome and research lab are well worth building as soon as you can, and unlike the other structures you've built so far, these ones have their own dedicated purpose. Both the biodome and research lab have special tracking screens and crafting stations that can only be used within those buildings, so don't just put down the biodome as a great oxygen generator and leave it at that. These two buildings will guide you down the rest of your path for your planet crafter journey. The same logic from the early game flows through the rest of the game for the terraformation stages, so just pay attention to what you want to increase next and how you can get the biggest possible number to get there the fastest. And now that you're all set up to craft the biosphere, it's time to go exploring and see what else this planet has to offer. 
Don't be afraid to go exploring whenever you feel that your numbers have stagnated. Sometimes you'll find new things to help you along your journey, and there are many interesting storylines to experience and wrecks to explore. So don't be shy in taking your time to venture somewhere where you thought nothing may be. And most of all, don't forget that beans save lives. Anyways, I think that's everything for me for now. I hope you enjoyed this beginner's overview of Planet Crafter. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already, it really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.